What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp animation tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to make one of those cool animations where the different parts and pieces of a building slide into place like you might see on one of those HGTV renovation shows or something like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so for this animation, because we don't want to use the section plane in order to use the section to show things moving into place, we actually want to show our walls kind of sliding up through the floor into place inside of SketchUp. So we're going to need to use the extension Animator, which you can find in the Sketchication plugin store. So I will link to this in the notes down below. Note that you need to install both Animator as well as LibFredo, which is Fredo 6's library of different scripts. Make sure you have that up to date. I will link to both of these in the notes down below. All right, so we really want to do three things with this animation. First, and obviously the biggest, is we want to have all of our stuff move into place, right? So we want to see everything slide into place. Second, we want to animate the movement of our camera, right? So we want to start where we have just kind of a floor plan showing up, so something like this, and then we want the walls to slide out of our floor plan. Third, we want to animate the style so that this looks a little bit more like a blueprint or something like that. So I will make this file available as a part of my SketchUp animation series. So you can download it and follow along if you want to at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. So what we want to do is first off, generally when I'm creating an animation like this, I want to create a new file because we're going to do some grouping and stuff that doesn't necessarily line up with what we would do for like layout. Right? So what we want to do is let's go ahead and save this as floor plan example for animation. Okay, so that's just going to give us our own file that we can kind of mess around without, without worrying about breaking anything. So we've got that saved and what we need to do is we need to animate the parts and pieces moving into place. And so for this, generally what we're going to want is we're going to want the exterior wall to slide into place, we're going to want the interior walls to slide into place, and then we're going to want all the furniture and furnishings to slide into place. So really what we want is we want all of this kind of grouped together. And then I'm also going to take all of it and I'm going to move it down below my floor plan image. And so what I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to take all my furniture like this. These are all models I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. So I'm going to take all of this furniture. I'm just going to put it in a group, right? So I'm just going to make it a group and I'm just going to call this furniture. So we'll just label this furniture right here. And then I'm just going to toggle it off for just a second. Second of all, I need to make sure that all of my doors that are in my interior go in my interior walls group. So I'm just going to select my doors and we'll do a shift click. We'll select all our interior walls and we'll put those in a group. And we'll just call that interior walls, right? So that's our second group. And then we want to take all of our doors and windows and put them in a group with our exterior wall like this. So I'm just going to make this a group and we'll just call this exterior walls. And we'll just toggle that off as well. So what that gives us is that gives us basically four groups in this model. We've got our interior walls, our exterior walls, our floor plan, and our furniture. And so one other thing I want to do before we jump into animator is I just want to take this image, I just want to move it up above our walls. Remember, that's why we created a file just for our animation is so that we could have this image right here and have the walls come out of it, right? So I don't have to worry about messing it up by moving things around because this is specifically for my animation. And so what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna jump into my clip editor right here. So you can see how you can jump in the clip editor by clicking on this button. And so what we wanna do is we wanna animate our walls sliding into position. And so the way we wanna do that is we wanna insert a unit movement. So we're just gonna click on this little square right here and click on new movement. So now it's going to ask us which object we want to move. Well, in this case, we want to rotate down and we want to select our exterior walls. And make sure that you're selecting the exterior walls group, so like the higher level or the highest level part of the group, so that you're picking up both your walls and your windows. We're just going to click on this, and all we want to do is we just want to give this a translation animation. So I'm just going to click right here, and all we want to do is we just want to click on the corner point right here, and we will have our walls slide into place right here, right? So then once we have that set up, we can click on the checkbox right here to save this into our timeline. So now what we have is we have an animation right here where if we click at zero and click on play, our wall is gonna move into place, 
just like this. Note that I do have a floor in here, so it's blocking that floor plan so I don't get that flashing when the faces occupy the same level. But we've got this animated, we've got this animated so that our walls are moving into place, right? Well, then we need to do the same thing with our interior walls and our furniture. So we're just going to insert a movement here. Select our interior walls. And we'll move this so that our walls are in place right here. So now notice how we have two animations. And so if I was to play this, right, our exterior walls would move into place and our interior walls would move into place, just like this. Notice if you want those to kind of go concurrently, you can drag this up. So you can drag this up so that it has a start time while the other walls are moving. So if you do that, notice how your walls are gonna come in and then your interior walls will slide in as a part of this as well. And then we just need to do the same thing with our furniture. So we'll add a new movement, click on our furniture. Remember you want the highest level, so it's gonna be the furniture right here. And we're just gonna set this so that these are on top of our floor. Like this, and try to find an inference point that's on the floor. That's gonna make this the easiest. Then we can click on the checkbox right here. So now, if we were to play this, you'll have your walls move into place, and then your furniture will move into place as well. And so you can kind of mess around with this to get the result that you want. Like for example, depending on how long you want this to be, you could click on this and you could adjust the duration of the element. So if you wanted this to take maybe like four seconds to slide in, you could just click on this and click on the duration and type in a value of four. So you could make each one of these a little bit longer, which would make your clip longer, but it'll also make everything move a little bit slower. And you can kind of preview this just by moving your mouse in here. So probably what I would want is I would want this to start at about two seconds. I want this to start maybe at about four seconds. So now we've got this animation. See our walls are sliding into place like this. And then there goes our furniture sliding into place as well. So that's step one, getting everything sliding into place. Step two is gonna be your camera transitions, right? Because we don't want this like boring camera that's just kind of fixed in our video, right? We want our camera to actually move around. And so usually when we do this, what we want is we want a camera that starts at a little bit more of like a floor plan look. So kind of a straight up and down. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this little camera button right here. We're gonna insert a new camera. And in this case, notice there's a lot of different options in here. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick a camera view. So maybe like this one right here. I'm just gonna click on the button for capture current camera view. So what that's going to do is that's going to store this camera in this camera object. And so if I click on the checkbox, notice how now my animation is going to be kind of straight up and down. But we don't want to stay in this, uh, we don't want to stay in this camera location, right? We want this to move. So what we want to do is we just want to add a new camera location maybe at like two seconds. So we're just gonna click on the button here to insert a new camera again. For our second camera, we're gonna assume this is gonna rotate down kinda like this. So we're gonna click on the button for capture current view camera again and click the checkbox. Well, what this is gonna do is this is gonna animate the transition between the different cameras that you have in your scene. So notice how this is rotating down as your walls are coming up. And so usually what I want is I want maybe a camera in the middle, so maybe starting at like three seconds, and then I want a camera at the end. So maybe for this one, we would set it to start at four seconds. So you can just click on this and type in a value of four. And then at the end, we wanna add another camera, and I want this one to be maybe something like this. So now, if we play our animation, it's gonna transition between the first point and the second point, and then between the second point and the third point, 
like this. So now, so now we have our stuff moving into place and we have our camera transition in here. So the last thing we wanna do is we wanna set up a style, right? So we want the style to make this look a certain way. And so what I wanna do in order to do that is we're gonna use the button over here to insert a visual effect. And we'll probably go ahead and save this real quick. So I'm just gonna click on the button for save. I'm gonna save my SketchUp file as well. But now we just wanna add a new visual effect. And in this case, the visual effect that we wanna add is we wanna add a SketchUp style, right? So we wanna click right here. Well, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna capture whatever the style is that you have in your rendering. Well, that just means that we need to come over here into our styles section and just build the style that we want, right? So there's a blueprint view in here that you can use. You could definitely use this. So if you clicked on capture rendering style right here, Notice how this is gonna be animated in that style. And so one thing we wanna do is we wanna set this rendering style to start at zero seconds, because we want it to start at the beginning of the clip. But now if you click play, notice how this rendered animation is gonna have that style associated with it. So you could go into your assorted styles and use the blueprint style. And so what I actually wanna do is I wanna build on top of the hidden line style, right? So the hidden line style is a style that's built into your default sets right here. And basically what it does is it makes your drawing like a line drawing. Um, so it doesn't have colors in here. What it has instead is it just has your edges and then white faces. Then I also wanna adjust that a little bit. So I just wanna click on the button for edit and I just wanna adjust my edges so that they're thicker. So I'm gonna click on the button for profiles and I'm gonna give them a thickness maybe of like four or something like that. But then I also want them to have a color, right? I don't want them to be black. I want them to be like blue. So kind of like an old school blueprint style like this. So we're gonna click on okay. And so what that's done is that's come in here and that's set this up so that now your edges are gonna look like a blueprint style. All right, so now that we've got this hidden line style set up, I'm just gonna save it just by clicking the plus button right here. And I'm gonna click on the button for capture rendering style. And I'm gonna click on the button for save the sequence and exit. So we wanna make sure that that rendering style starts at scene zero. But then we can click on the play button and our rendered animation is gonna show up just like this. And so one other thing that I wanna do that I didn't do originally is I wanna start where I can see my floor plan, right? And because we have this set up as hidden line style, it's not loading in the texture right here for that floor plan. So what we wanna do is we just wanna take this rendering style we're gonna set it to start at one second, but then at zero seconds right here, I wanna have a different rendering style like this one, just my standard hidden line rendering style that shows my texture images. So we'll just click in here and we'll add a new visual effect. We'll capture this rendering style, then we'll click the checkbox. So now what this is gonna do is this is gonna transition between the styles. So you can start by seeing your floor plan and then Notice how this is gonna shift so that you can't see that floor plan image anymore. So now you've got this animation where everything's kind of moving into place. So the last thing we need to do is we need to export this video. So I always like to go ahead and save everything before I try to do this, but we're gonna go ahead and save it all. And then we wanna click on this button right here for generate a video for the film. And so you're going to have to make sure there's a plugin you have to download called FFmpeg that you need to install in here so that this will export this as a video instead of an image sequence. I will link to a video specifically about that in the notes down below. Um, but once you install that, you're going to have options in here for MP4 or MOV or whatever video style you want. In this case, I'm just going to set this up as MP4 and I'm just going to call this construction animation. And notice how you can set the dimensions of your video right here. So 
For example, I could come in here and I could set the dimensions of my video to something more like 1280. And notice how this is gonna adjust because it's gonna lock the aspect ratio in here. But you can set this up where you can export at a certain speed, a certain frame rate. Remember, more frames will be smoother, but it's gonna take longer to create and it's gonna make a bigger file, right? Because it's just different still frames. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 25. You can click on the button right here to get a test image to see how big this is going to be. So you can see how it's probably gonna be about this big on your screen, which ought to work fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on generate video. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna export all of these different frames inside of SketchUp, and then it's gonna stitch them together into a video. So you can see how this is giving me a certain amount of elapsed time. So this is kind of the estimated time when this is gonna be done. So I'm gonna let this work and then we'll come back and look at our final result. All right, so you can either open the folder where this was saved, or you can just click on the play button right here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna play the animation that we've created. So notice what that does is that basically shows us this animation where everything slides into place. So creating an animation like this is actually really easy inside of SketchUp. All right, so if you wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course at thesketchupessentials.com slash course. In addition, I will make this example file available for download in my animations collection, which you can access at thesketchupessentials.com slash animation. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.